Nata Vite Horai Elohai Neshama Shenatata Vite Horai Welcome, everyone. So good to see you all. Here we are in the parking lot again. <laughs> and we've turned ourselves around. Hopefully, it'll be a more comfortable uh, place in terms of the sunlight. And also, it turns out that, ironically, this is the right direction to face towards the Torah anyway. So uh, really glad to be with everyone. What's the greeting for Yom Kippur? On Rosh Hashanah, we commonly say Shana Tova, may it be a good year, and that's still a beautiful thing to wish for each other today, tomorrow, uh, actually, anytime. But there's a separate special greeting for Yom Kippur. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Noam, go ahead. Go, he's saying Gamar Chatima Tova. Just practice it with me. Gamar Chatima Tova. That we should be able to complete our our day of prayer and be sealed. I like to think of it as be sealed for goodness into this year. We want to be written in the book of life on Rosh Hashanah and sealed on Yom Kippur. So we wish each other today, Gamar Chatima Tova. May we all be sealed together for goodness. And I'll ask us now to stand together. Rise up with me as you're able. The opening call to prayer together to community is actually not printed in your booklet. So if you can leave your booklet down just for a minute. But if you are at home and following in a machzor, we're on page 278. As we were learning together on Rosh Hashanah, we have special melodies to cue us to the season. On Rosh Hashanah and on Yom Kippur, only we have a special melody for calling ourselves into prayer. So I'm going to start out. Da, 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 da. That's my part. And I'll ask you to answer. Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed. So just try it with me just to practice first. Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed. You already sound like a bunch of pros. Okay, so just a chance to stand up tall together, to feel the full height of our bodies in whatever way we're able to stand, to press our feet into the floor below us, to take a big deep breath together, and I'll begin and ask you to respond. Barehu et Adonai hamevorach. Baruch Adonai hamevorach. Le'olam And with that opening call, we say that we're ready to begin. So we can now take our seats. And it's total joy to welcome Rousey Epsteiner forward to share with us a teaching about the Shema. When we get there, page three in the booklet or page 304 in the Machzor. All right, so coming up next, we have the Shema, like Rachel said. We always say the first part out loud. We proclaim proudly, just like down there. Uh, we procla proclaim proudly, hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. But we always whisper the second part. And I know in Kippur, we get to say it out loud. So there's a lot of different interpretations as to why on Yom Kippur, is that better? Yom Kippur, we say it out loud. Um, and I found one that I, that I really loved. And so one interpretation is that we say the first part quietly because Moses stole it from the angels when he was on Mount Sinai receiving the Torah. He brought it down to the Israelites who are waiting for him. And so we say it as this like secret, like we're not supposed to know this prayer that the angels have. 
But on Yom Kippur, today we are angels. We are so close to God today. Um, and so we don't need to whisper it. Um, there is this image of angels described in the Torah as having one leg. They sort of stand on one leg. And so before we say the Shema, and as we say the second part out loud, I ask if you're able to, to sort of sit with your legs close together um, as if you are an angel today. Um, so, yeah. Standing up, yeah, on one leg, or it's like a flamingo, either one. Um, and so I know we have someone reading Shema. Isaac and Naomi Beal to come read Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malhuto Leolam Vaed Ve'ahavta Et Adonai Eloheha the <laughs> Ushabaha, Umeha, Ushabam Leon, Adia Deha, Veha Yula Tota Fort, Vene Neha, Ufta Tam, Al Mississot Veteha, Ubi Shareha. Thank you. Shakrach. So in this little taste of shacharit, just running through some of the highlights, we're, believe it or not, already at the Amidah. And Zochreinu Lechaim is part of the Avot and Gevurot. Every time we talk about our ancestors, during these 10 days, we add this special passage. It's on page 328 in the Machzor or page 11 in the handout. And we don't know exactly if God has ears. And we don't know for sure if God would even pay attention if God had ears. But we know that when we direct our prayers, our energies to some place beyond us, when we recognize how small, important, and awesome, but small each one of us is, and we address our prayers to the big picture, we ask that somewhere, something, somehow, remember us for life. We choose life, and the universe meets us partway. So, chreinu l'chaim, melech hafetz b'chaim, Ruler who delights in life, we're reminding God of God's essence. Don't forget, you're merciful. So remember us for life. Vechotvenu besefer hachaim, and inscribe us the great metaphor of this day. Only a metaphor, but a powerful one, being written in that book of life, we pray. Lama ancha, do it for your own sake. Do it for the universe, not just for me. Elohim Chaim, because you are a God of life. Zochreinu lechaim, melech hafetz b'chaim, vekotvenu besefer hachaim, vekotvenu besefer, besefer hachaim, 
Lemaancha Elohim Chaim once again. Zochreinu lechaim, melech hafetz b'chaim, v'kotvenu b'sefer ha'chaim, v'kotvenu b'sefer, b'sefer ha'chaim, lemaancha Elohim chaim. Invite us to rise for just a moment, feel our bodies, feel the breeze, feel the power of being together in holy community on a very special day. And beyond all the beautiful words of tradition in our books, a moment for the prayer that's in our own hearts. Let our deepest wishes pour out in a moment of silent meditation. It all comes together with peace, wholeness, shalom. 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 Would you turn with me to page 13 in your prayer booklet? What page in the or, or page 350 if you're using the, wow, the big machzor. Um, <laughs> we have here in front of us an important piece of our prayer tradition, which actually invites us to tune in to the parts of life that are hard and even scary. And I want to turn for a minute now to the young people that are here under our tent and just ask you, what have you been noticing in the world in the last year or so, or maybe in your own life, that brings up some questions about fear? or danger? Anybody noticing anything in the news, or maybe even in your own neighborhood, or maybe even in your own home? Nathan, are you, you going to say something? Yeah. Climate change. Climate change is really scary. And hold on, you guys, I want to come to you too. So one of the things that our ancient prayer asks us is to think about how we are vulnerable to fire and to uh, water, to storms. It's right here in our prayer. So Nathan, I think you're really tapping into something that we've been thinking about for a long time and that we need to think about, especially now. Um, 
Zev and Isaac, and then this person right here. Go ahead, Zev. Do you all mind standing when you speak just so it's, people can hear you a little better? War. So I don't know how many people in this tent have been watching as the United States has tried to make its way out of Afghanistan, and that turned out to be a very, very dangerous transition, including loss of life. And we're still hoping for peaceful landing for the people who are trying to make their way forward. So yeah, right, right in the headlines, it's also in our prayer. Isaac, go ahead. You were going to say war also, Afghanistan. Yeah, it's on our minds. Um, I don't know your name. Zoe. Zoe. COVID-19. Thank you. I was wondering if somebody might bring that up. That's been a pretty scary situation for all of us. I think at all different ages, it really puts us in touch with the fact that we're vulnerable and we have to take special care and we have to be extra kind knowing that different people are dealing with different challenges related to the virus. So I saw Shira, you had a hand up. Were you going to say something else or were you? COVID-19, yeah. Okay, last one, and tell us your name, please. Eliana? Do you want to say? Pollution. Yeah, pollution is a big problem still. I remember actually when I was, I guess, probably around your age. Uh, what was the jingle? Give a hoot, don't pollute. Um, that's been one that we've been dealing with for a long time and we're still dealing with. So you can see the prayers, the lines that are in our booklet on page 13, or again, if you're following in the Mahsur, ask us to notice, to speak, to take special note of the many ways that life throws curveballs at us. It throws curveballs at us personally, and it also throws curveballs at us as a species, as a human species, and even as, a, as part of creation in general. So we don't hide away from our fears in our prayers. We actually invite them forward and then look for some sense of stability and strength in the midst of our prayers. We we'll ask you one more time to stand with me, as is our custom. And just chant with me the one refrain from this special Unatana Tokef prayer at the top of page 13, which says, on Rosh Hashanah, it is written, on Yom Kippur, it is sealed. Who will encounter all of these challenges? And we answer that question on the next page. The answer to the question is, we summon teshuvah, tefillah, and tzedakah to soften the harshness of those curveballs that we know are coming, have come and are still coming. It's a custom to open the ark. Join me, please. Berosh Hashana Yikatehevun Uveyom Som Kippur Yechatehemun Berosh Hashana Yikatehevun Uveyom Som Kippur Yechatehemun One more Berosh Hashana Yikatehevun Uveyom som ki por yechate mun, pero shashana yikate mun. Uveyom som ki por yechate mun. And now, if you turn over to page 15, and let's affirm our answer with prayer, with righteousness, and with spiritual return. Uteshuva utefila utstaka mavirin mavirin et roa hagzera 
Mavirin, Mavirin, et roah gzera. And to end, let's read together on the top of page 14, just the top five lines in the English. Top of page 14. But teshuva and tefila and sedaka make easier what God and life may decree, make easier what life holds in store, make easier facing the world, make easier facing ourselves. We can be seated. I would like to invite Mira Cohen up here to sing a beautiful melody that some of you might have heard at the Biachat service for Rosh Hashanah. And accompanying her on the accordion will be Melissa Willits. And the refrain in between the verses of Return Again is Hashivenu. So please join me when you hear me sing. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return to who you are, return to what you are, return to where you are, born and reborn again, return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Hashivenu, Hashivenu, Adonai Elecha, Benashuva, Benashuva, Hatesh, Hatesh, Yaminu Kekedem. Return again. Return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return to who you are, return to what you are, return to where you are, born and reborn again, return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Hashivenu, Hashivenu, Adonai Elecha, Venashuva, Venashuva, Hatesh, Hatesh, Yamenu Return again, 
Return again, return to the land of your soul. Return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Return to who you are, return to what you are, return to where you are, born and reborn again, return again, return again, return to the land of your soul. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. That was the title of a very famous sermon delivered not by a rabbi. <clears throat> we are sinners. We talk about sin. We're making mistakes. Anyone remember what competitive sport the image of chet, of sin, actually comes from? We talked about this nine days ago but I didn't warn you there'd be a quiz. Anyone? It's not quite track and field. It's out there. Hmm? Lacrosse? Lacrosse, I like it. Uh, I think it's a little more recent. Boxing. I want to KO that sin. Uh, no. <laughs> sure. Archery, thank you. And if I have practiced, and if I'm focused and in the zone, I'll hit my target. And if not, I need to try harder. I need to focus more. I need to become better at this. That's all that it is. So turn and return. You may have been wondering, as Mira sang that beautiful song, what is the land of my soul anyway? The idea is, that when we sin, when we miss the mark, we're actually missing the best of what we are. We're missing what we're capable of. We can do better because we know we are better. So there's this funny mix of attacking ourselves for all the mistakes we've made and also loving ourselves for all of that strength inside us because the land of our soul is amazing. So where we have sinned, chetted, missed the mark, we just need to keep trying. We need to practice at something more important than archery or lacrosse or boxing. This is the sport of living and living well. We got to practice all the time. So on page 34, of your booklet or page 424, I want to just introduce you to one of the great melodies of this holiday. Please repeat after me, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> now you know how to sing it. Ay, 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 and then you see, here's a sample list. We're just going to do the first five. Asham nu, Bagad nu, Gazal nu, Dibar nu dofi. Ay, 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 and it goes on, and they all end with new. So new? Why do they end with new? What is this suffix new? Us. E for ani, me, that would be my sin. New for anach new, us, that's our sin. We are in this together. And I make mistakes, and you make mistakes, and mine lead to yours, and yours lead to mine, but your help can help me un- do my mistakes and I can help you undo yours and together we become better. New, plural. Alchet, 
which is hinted at here on the next page of 35, or in the Machzor on 430, one of those others where we catalog, where we name. We say, here's where I know I need to turn and return, get back to that land of my soul, because I've lost it just a little bit, but I'm capable of so much better. <laughs> to bring that message home, we invite now three family parties, Jonathan, Dahlia, and Alice, Naomi, Rafi, and Marty, and Julie, Jameson, and Ronan, to read the three stanzas of one that is in your book on page 969, if you have the book. If not, you're going to listen, and you're going to take it in, and you're going to say, yeah, I do that, and yeah, I can do better this year. For the wrong we did before you by listening to voices at odds with what we knew was right. For the wrong we did before you by not listening to voices telling us unpleasant truths. For the wrong we did before you by closing our ears to the poor and the hungry. For the wrong we did before you by not working at relationships. For the wrong we did before you by making no time for those who needed us. For the wrong we did before you for abusing our health. For the wrong we did before you by unnecessary anger. For the wrong we did before you by giving in to bullies. For the wrong we did before you by talking of others' failings behind their backs instead of face to face. For, for all, all these wrongs, wrongs O oh God, God of forgiveness, forgiveness forgive us, wipe, wipe the slate clean, grant us atonement. atonement. For the wrong we did before you by forgiving in Jews what we condemn in others. For the wrong we did before you for forgiving in others for what we condemn in Jews. And for the wrong we did before you by taking Israel for granted. For the wrong we did before you by polluting the environment. For the wrong we did before you by cutting ourselves off from other people, races, and cultures. For the wrong we did before you by being afraid and not welcoming of others' disabilities. For the wrong we did before you by callous treatment of those with whom we lived. Oh, for, oh, for the wrong we did in people uh, before, ah, for the wrong we did before you by callous treatment for those for whom we work and study. For all these wrongs, O oh God, God of forgiveness, forgive us, wipe, wipe the slate clean, and grant us atonement. For the wrong we did before you by ignoring the ever-present threat of war. For the wrong we did before you by bearing grudges. 
for the wrong we did before you by indulging in excessive luxuries. For the wrong we did before you by giving less tzedakah than we could afford. For the wrong we did before you by manipulating others for our own gain. For the wrong we did before you by making those we love feel guilty. For the wrong we did before you by ignoring important issues in our community and country. For the wrong we did before you by being ashamed to act morally in public. For all these wrongs, O God, God of forgiveness, forgive us, wipe the slate clean, and grant us atonement. One of the words of the day is metaphor. Who can tell me what metaphor means? Sixth grade English, come on. Most of you can do this. Yes. Ah, you're making a comparison, but it's not identical. So you don't, right? It's it's like, but it's not the same thing. Excellent. It's kind of like calling something different, yeah, it's similar to. Similar to and different. It's an analogy. No two things that are different are the same. That's why they are called different. But there's a lot that we can learn from it. So Yom Kippur is like there is a God who is tuning in to our track record and checking our grades, even the ones that we never saw. Remember at 8.37 p.m. on March 24th when I snapped and yelled? Mm, yeah, I forgot that. But as a metaphor, God remembers. And you add all those up, along with all the good things we did. And the biggest metaphor of all is that we get written in a book, in the book of life, or God forbid, the book of death, or the book of question mark, the in-between, where we are constantly on trial. We don't know. We should live our lives like we're always constantly on trial, because everything we do matters but we're not yet good enough. So with metaphor comes hyperbole. That's more of an SAT word, hyperbole, exaggeration. Ain banu ma'asim, we're about to say. There are no good deeds in us. That's an overstatement, but it's a helpful one. What it really means is there are never enough good deeds in us. So one more metaphor, one of hundreds, two of hundreds of metaphors for God. God is everything. God is existence. God is unknowable. So what are we doing assigning names and pronouns to God? Well, it's just metaphors, and none of them are fully accurate. God is our mother and our queen, just as God is our father and our king, and just as God is rock and source, and living waters. God is all of that. Tradition uses the metaphors of Avinu and Malkinu, our father, our parent, one who's above us, but watching out for us, and Malkinu, our king, our ruler, who's way above us and out there and may not know us or care about our individual plight, but is still in charge of affairs. Those are two good metaphors. There are more, you find your own. But on page 25 in your booklet or page 460 in the book, 
all those metaphors come together in maybe the most famous sentence from all of the high holy days. Our parent, our sovereign, be gracious to us and answer us, even though we don't have enough good deeds in us. Deal with us in righteousness and in love and save us now. We're about to open the ark. Here we go. Please rise. Avinu malkeinu Chonenu vaneinu Avinu malkeinu Chonenu vaneinu Ki en banu maasim Aseimanu Sedaka vachesed Aseimanu Tzedaka vachesed Veoshienu Avinu malkeinu Chonenu vanenu Avinu malkeinu Chonenu vanenu Ki ein banu you may be seated. And now I'd like to invite up the singers. And we are going to ask all of you to join in on the refrain for Ose Shalom. I am hoping that <clears throat> some of you might even want to clap because this time we are doing the song a cappella. face the truth nature's precious balance undone by our abuse oh 
source of all creation, help us find the will to change, to guard and to serve our home. O Shalom Bimroma, into my heart and the longing is there for it's real and all the world to bring peace is my prayer in spite of pain and history i still cling to this dream let us bring peace in our time Okay. As we are quickly making our way through some of those melodies and, and key ideas that we may only hear twice or even once a year, many of us missed it last year, that's a big percentage of your lives for many of you. So we want to hit all the greatest hits but they're not all in this book. And one of them is typically at the beginning of the Torah service, we recite a line from Exodus 34. In context, God and Moses are schmoozing after the golden calf. They're up on Mount Sinai, metaphor. And, and Moses is saying, all right, this has been awesome. We've spent 40 days together. That This is dreamy, right? But really, come on, let me see you. And all God can say is, you know, you, you can't, but, but you can see my essence, my goodness. And then we hear these 13 things, which are in uh, our book, uh, if you have that, on page 468. And whether you know it or not, I'm going to invite you to try to sing along and tune in because this is one of the most important verses in the Torah and it's one of the most important refrains of these high holy days. And you will hear it over and over. And it's important to know God's attributes because who is created in the image of God? You and you and you and you and all of us. We are created B'Tselem Elohim in God's image. So. As we understand God's essence, which is to be capable of forgiving, to be gracious, to be slow to anger, even though we're imperfect, we can do that too. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vechanun Erech Apayim Erech Apayim Verav Chesed Verav Chesed Vemet Vemet No Tzer Chesed Lalafim Tzer Chesed Lalafim No Se Avon No Se Avon Vafesha Vafesha Vechata Vechata Vinaka Venake Adonai Adonai El Rachum Vechanun Erech Apaim Verav Chesed Vemet No 
יוצר חסד לאלפים, נושא עוון ופשע וחטא ונקה. For the rest of the opening of the Torah service, we invite Razi back, and we are on 470 or page 29 in the booklet. I would like to invite up Jonah Bramble and Aidan Jarrell to open the ark, and then they will be <clears throat> reading the Torah portion for today in both English and, of course, in Hebrew. I'm going to teach you guys real quickly sign language for Shema. If you already know it, it might look a little differently than what I've done, but we'll do this now before we say it. Do you hear me louder? Okay. Um, so we go Shema, if you can follow along, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Good job. But now we are going to do the, the same signing with the high holiday melody. Okay. Shema Yisrael. So today we are going to be speaking about, we are going to be reading about, and I hope we're going to be thinking about forgive, the, the theme of forgiveness, but a very specific kind of forgiveness, forgiveness between siblings. And I am sure that some of you may relate to this theme. <clears throat> And so um, our Aliyah today is for anyone who is working on their relationship with a sibling or siblings. And those of you who are only children will respond, <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. Um, but before we do the blessings, I invite Jonah to read a translation of the three specific verses that Aiden will be chanting. And it's the story of Joseph and his brothers. Just give me a little wave if you know that story. Okay, we don't have to really go over it, but this reading is right at the time when Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. And there are a lot of emotions welling up in all of them. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him because they were startled by his presence. Then Joseph, Joseph said to his brothers, please come closer to me. And they drew closer. And he said, I am your brother, Joseph, when you sold, who you sold, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not be sad and let it not trouble you that you sold me here. For it was 
to preserve life that God sent me before you. So now anyone <clears throat> who is working on repairing relationships with a sibling or siblings, please rise. Unless you're an only, you're going to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Baruch Ed Adonai Hamvora. Baruch Adonai Hamvora Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu It's in this section, but it's here's it's Hayomo Yosef. No, is that it? How about the Chai? Here it is. It's right here. Vayomer Yosef, Elechav, Ani Yosef, Haod Avi Chai. Um, Velo Yachlu Echav, La. La anot oto kini halu mi panav vayomer yosef el echav yeshuna elai veigashu vayomer ani yosef achichem asher mechartem Oto mi oti mi trima ve ata el el al te atvu ve el ve el ichar ve enechem ki mechartem oti oti hena aki ki lem Ki lemich, ki lemich ya, Elohim, leaf nechem. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu ruach olam, asher natalam Torah temet. Ah, so traditionally. This, uh, this uh, Misha Berach moment where whoever had the Aliyah, the service leaders offer them a little extra string. So for everyone who stood up and everyone who is or was a sibling, a blessing to remember that there is a part of yourself there, that when you look at the other, it's partially a mirror. And at the same time, it is a completely different person with a completely different approach to the world. And you have a foundational connection. And when you are not cool to the other, you are losing access to some of the best growth and best insight, as well as most powerful love that you can ever experience. So stay open, stay cool, you can tease each other, 
You can get on each other's nerves, but keep it special, keep it holy, and keep it loving. Amen. <clears throat> and now we are going to have an alternate, alternative Mishaberach. It's a song called Come Healing. It's by Leonard Cohen and Patrick Leonard. And I invite the singers back up here. And Melissa. and bring it to me now the fragrance of those promises you never dare to vow the slander that you carry the cross you left behind from healing of the body come healing of the mind let the heavens hear it the penitential heart Spirit, come healing on the land. Behold the gates of mercy in arbitrary space, and none of us deserving the cruelty or the grace. From solitude of longing, where love has been confined, come healing of the body. Come healing of the mind. Oh, see the darkness yielding, the door, the light of heart. Come healing of the reason, come healing of the heart. Oh, travel dust concealing, a non divided love. The heart beneath is teaching to broken heart above. Let the heavens falter, let the earth proclaim, come healing to the altar, come healing of the name. The branches, the branches, to lift the little bud, the longing of the arteries to purify the blood. And let the heavens hear it. The penitential hymn, come healing of the spirit, come healing of the limb. Oh, let the heavens hear it, the penitential hymn, come healing of the spirit, come healing of the limb. Oh, let the heavens hear it, the penitential hymn, come healing of the spirit. And now to speak about sibling relationships, we have the Unger brothers.
In the reading that Aiden just gave, Joseph has just revealed himself to his brothers, and though they are in shock, he is focused on forgiveness and reconnecting with his family. While a casual Torah reader might expect Joseph to be bitter and angry, he is just the opposite. One of the themes of this passage is forgiveness. Even in modern times, brothers and siblings still hurt each other, and there is still a need for plenty of forgiveness when people hurt each other emotionally or physically. To truly forgive requires emotional courage and the maturity to step outside of your comfort zone. Sometimes it is important to realize the bigger picture, that your relationship is more important than the bitterness of holding a grudge. Speaking from our personal experience, Sylvan has never dumped me into a pit or sold me into slavery. <laughs> and I never will. Th thank you. So as I was saying, even though we haven't treated each other that poorly, we have been mean to each other at times. I acknowledge, for example, that I have hurt my older brother many times, usually by being annoyed. For example, sometimes when he is using a Chromebook or game that I want, the only reason I want it is because he's using it. In those situations, I try to annoy him rather than hurt him physically. Because, let's be honest, that's not happening. But it's happened to me. What Rowan says is true. As a middle child, I have the experience of being both a younger sibling and an older sibling. For example, I might annoy my big brother, and it's possible that I have hurt my younger brother physically at times. <laughs> These are each forms of aggression. In thinking about the story of Joseph, we really tried to think of major incidents in our lives to describe situations of extreme harm and forgiveness. But we really couldn't. That's because when we do fight, we mostly end up forgiving each other and then forgetting the details because it's simply not helpful to hold a grudge. Just like Joseph, we have had to learn to forgive and let go. Over the past years, I've experienced guilt and remorse for my actions. I've realized that my relationship with my friends and family is extremely important and should be put first. But the honest truth is that neither one of us has ever experienced a break in a family relationship as severe as the example of Joseph and his brothers. We have never really been that mad at each other. We've been mad about each other's actions or words. It's these little things that might set us off, but deep down we will always have a connection. If we ever do experience a much deeper rift, or if any of us do across our community, the Torah provides a fundamental lesson about the extreme power of extreme forgiveness. Thank you. Yeah. I hope all of you will have drunken in those wise words. <clears throat> and now I invite, <clears throat> excuse me, Ariel and Daniel Ribeiro, the Hagba and Lila, to lift and dress the Torah. Go down and up. I'm going to hold it from here. Okay. What am I doing? You are pushing down and then up. This old Torah, a share some motions. We've never been in Israel.
And now I would like to invite Ellie Kleinman and Natalie Zaid to open the ark and to lead us in Eitz Chaim Heat. Ask those who are observing yard cider morning to please rise for the mourner's cottage. Um, we're going to do the order a little differently today. We're going to do mourner's cottage right now, and then I'll lay new afterwards um, so that we can commit to the full prostration, if you will. Yidka dalvi kadash me raba ve'almadi brachirute ve'amlich malchute ve'chayechon uv'yamechon uv'chaye dechol beit Yisrael ba'gala uv'izman kariv ve'imru amen. Yehe Shme Raba Mevarach Leolam Umeo Maya, Vit Barach, Vit Tabach, Vit Paar, Vit Ramam, Vit Nase, Vit Hadar, Vit Ale, Vit Alal, Shme de Kudusha, Brechu, Leela, Leela, Micho Birchata, Vishirata, Tushbechata, Venechamata, Damiran, Belma, Vimru, Amen, Yehe Shlama Raba, Minchamaya, Vichaim, Alenu, Vel, Kol Yisrael, Vimru, Amen, Ose Shalom, Bimrumav, Yasa Shalom, Alenu Vel Kol Yisrael, Vel Kol Yoshve Tevel, Vemru, Amen. All right. All right. We did it. Last prayer. Um, so often we pray with our voices and we pray with our minds, but as we conclude our service today, right now, we get the opportunity to pray with our bodies as well. Um, I know we asked you guys to bring a yoga mat. Did anyone bring yoga mats? No. Oh, we got one. All right. Um, two. Amazing. Three. Bonus points. Perfect. Um, all right. So you have one too. Amazing. That's awesome. All right. So for this Alenu, we do this thing called prostrate. We lay all the way down, similar to like a child's pose. We do this to remember that when the high priest would say God's holy name in response, the Jews would lay themselves on the ground as sort of a sign of respect. We do this all together because we ask God to forgive us, similar to what Rabbi Fred said. This is like a new moment, right? We do this together and not individually um, because we, we ask forgiveness as a community. Um, so in a second, I'm going to ask you guys to find like a spot over there if you are comfortable and willing to come into this moment. Um, uh, take a deep breath for us to say our Alina. And a logistic note, this is actually the very last thing for our biachad, except for the shofar. Who brought a shofar? All right. So if it's not too awkward to balance a machzor, a shofar, and a yoga mat, I'm going to ask you to find a little space, spread out, but we'll be in hearing distance, especially with this. And as soon as we finish our great Alenu, we are going to say Tekiah Gedola. And 
be jolted into Teshuva and wish everyone a happy new year and a gamar Khatima Tova. I don't think anybody's following in their books. Join me, please. If you have a, a mat spread out so that you can come all the way down to the ground. Page 36, or in the Machzor, page 1202. <laughs> The very end of Alenu. The Neemar Behayadonai, the Melech of Kol Haaretz, Bayom Hahu, Ihe Adonai, Echad. Ushemo Echad. Ready? We're going to wait for the airplane. <laughs> Be called to Teshuva. We're going to wait for the helicopter. Bonus moment of silent prayer. Tekia <laughs> Gedola. Everyone, if you could help just to bring your blue booklets back to the table here.
גמר חתימה טובה.